dirty shunter indeed, scoffed Mavis. I do more than triple the work you could ever think of. My dear, keeping spick and span is what us engines are for. If not for that, we are nothing. Toby burst out into laughter. <laughs> Haven't heard that one in a while, he chortled. What are you talking about? quizzed Thomas. Oh, it's an old story. You lot wouldn't want to hear it. Tell us, tell us, demanded Percy. If you say so. And this is the story that Toby told. One brisk morning at a bustling harbour, ships were being docked, crates were being unloaded, and cranes were swinging to and fro, waiting for deliveries. If you look closer, however, you could see a fleet of little tram engines puffing about shunting vans and sorting trains. But all was not well. The number one engine, Bruce, was never satisfied with anything. To him, the entire harbour was out to get him. Of course, this wasn't the case, but it wouldn't stop Bruce. I don't get it, he would say. I've been here the longest, and no one cares for me. It's like I'm invisible. You would be appreciated more if you actually did your work, interjected Toby. Bruce just scoffed and puffed away. Later, the manager spoke to all the engines. Well, it seems that there's a branch line up north that needs an engine. And it's bought one of you. They don't care which tram they get, so I'm leaving it up to you lot to the side. Good day. The minute he left, Bruce was the one to speak up first. Well, we all know it's got to be me. Just look at me. All spick and span. Unlike you all with all that dust and grime. That is not what a proper engine should look like. I look proper. All the engines just groaned, but before they could retort, Bruce had already puffed away to tell the manager. The day came where Bruce was to leave. He was giddy with excitement. Finally out of this rotten harbour, he thought to himself. The yard foreman came up to him. Sorry Bruce, the number two is out of commission. Could you quickly go shunt his train before you leave? Me? Shut dirty vans before leaving for my new home? Certainly not! And with that, he bustled away. But wait! cried the foreman. It's blocking your line! But Bruce was too far away to hear him. Workmen screamed and shouted at him, but he didn't listen. He sharply rounded a bend when he saw a heavy goods train in front of him. He put on his brakes as hard as he could, but it was too late. Bruce was toppled on his side, covered in fish. Well, 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 said Toby. If this is what a proper engine looks like, I wouldn't even dare to think of an unproper one. Just then, the manager came running up. You stupid conceited engine! It'll take a long time to get you back into working order! Now who's gonna go to the branch line? Could I possibly go, sir? Asked Toby. If that's what you want, number seven, that would be acceptable. Oh, thank you, sir! Goodbye, everyone! He said, and with a ring of a bell, Toby set off to his new home. And that's how I got my branch line. Well then, said Daisy. I'm sorry, Mavis, my dear. I didn't mean what I said. Oh, that's all right. I do admit that you can work hard. Well, now that that's settled, we can get some sleep. But, but, but wait, inquired Percy. How did you meet Henrietta? Oh, dear Percy. That is quite a story, and one for another time. And with that, one by one, all the engines fell asleep.